From TLDR News, this is your daily briefing for Thursday the 9th of March 2023. Good afternoon. In today's Spotlight story, we run through the overnight barrage of Ukraine by Russia. This isn't the only thing happening in the world though, so we'll run through three of today's other important stories. And in our exclusive Nebula section, I sit down with Jan and discuss Eurovision 2023. But first, what happened in Ukraine last night? This morning, President Zelensky confirmed that Russia had launched a massive missile barrage in 10 regions of Ukraine overnight. He confirmed that both residential buildings and critical infrastructure were hit. So far, the 80 missiles have reportedly killed six people. There were additional reports that Russia used hypersonic missiles as part of this attack. Ukraine claims that, while 80 missiles did land, they were successful in shooting down 34 cruise missiles and four of eight Iranian-made Shahed drones. Irrespective, though, this is the largest nighttime missile barrage for about three weeks. About the strike, President Zelensky said that this was an attempt by Moscow to intimidate Ukrainians again. He added that the occupiers can only terrorise civilians. That's all they can do. The missiles hit different parts of Ukraine. Worryingly, some of the missiles hit the Zaporizhia region, which is where the largest nuclear power station in Europe is located. As a result, it was completely cut off from the energy grid. Only a few days ago, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres visited Ukraine to discuss demilitarization efforts by the UN and the International Atomic Energy Agency. Responding to today's strikes, the head of the UN's nuclear watchdog, Rafael Grossi, made an appeal for a protection zone around the Russian-held Zaporizhia nuclear power station, saying he was astonished by the complacency surrounding the issue. Ukrainian energy minister Zhuman Galushchenko said of this situation that the Russians are putting the world on the brink of nuclear catastrophe. And this is the day after negotiations with the UN on the demilitarization of the plant. Other regions that were hit include Kyiv, Lviv, Kharkiv, Dnipropetrovsk, Odessa and more. Ukraine is currently suffering from blackouts and water shortages as a result of the missile strikes. According to authorities, only about 40% of residents in Kyiv currently have heating. But while the fighting rages on, the end date for the Black Sea grain deal is rapidly approaching. First agreed in July last year and later extended in November, the deal was brokered by the UN and Turkey and ensures safe passage for Ukrainian grain to be exported via the Black Sea. The deal is up for renewal on March the 18th. President Zelensky and UN Chief Guterres called for its extension, stressing the importance of the deal in bringing down global food prices and reducing food insecurity, with some 23 million tonnes of Ukrainian produce has been exported under the deal so far. Ukraine wants the deal to cover more of its ports, while Russia is seeking to get its own agricultural exports and fertilisers included in the agreement. Okay, so that's our main story for today, but there's a lot more going on around the world. So here's a rundown of three of the stories. Fiji's ousted Prime Minister Frank Bai Nimarama has been charged with abuse of office just months after the country voted him out. The country's suspended police commissioner will also be charged alongside the ex-Prime Minister over an allegation that they terminated an active police investigation into the activities of former staff members at the University of the South Pacific. The charges are the latest event in a significant fall from grace for Bainimarama. He came to power in a bloodless coup in 2006 and won elections in 2014 and 2018 before being voted out after 16 years in December. In February, he was suspended from Parliament for three years for sedition, then weeks later resigned his seat, just a day before prosecutors announced charges. But he's promised to stay in politics and has said the constitution is being stripped away almost on a daily basis by the new government. There's more on the way, but be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to make the daily briefing part of your daily routine. Or just search for us on your podcast app to listen along. In Japan, a wave of so-called sushi terrorism has taken place. It's important to note before we get into this story that this phrase refers to breaches of hygiene or etiquette in sushi restaurants. 
Acts of sushi terrorism have taken place before, but there appears to be more of it taking place at the moment. A notable case of this was when a diner wiped saliva on food destined for other people. Another is a case where a man drank from a communal soy sauce bottle. In response to these incidents, restaurants around the country have had to take preventative action, such as halting the use of conveyor belts. Newspapers in the country have confirmed that three diners have been arrested on suspicion of forcible obstruction of business. These arrests are thought to be the first ever in the country involving customers suspected of unhygienic and harassing behaviour. Yesterday, we reported on the mass protests in Georgia, the country, not the US state, against a proposed foreign agents law. Mass protests continued for a second night last night, with protesters again facing off against riot police with tear gas and water cannons. But today, the Georgian government made a U-turn and announced that they would unconditionally withdraw the controversial draft bill. As we said yesterday, the law would require any organisation with more than 20% funding from abroad to register as a foreign agent or face big fines. Critics likened this to a Russian law which helped the Kremlin crack down on dissent. In its statement announcing the U-turn, the government said a machine of lies was able to present this bill in a negative light and misled a certain part of the public. But the U-turn may not be the end of things. The government said, as the emotional background subsides, we will better explain to the public what the bill was and why it was important to ensure transparency of foreign influence in our country. Scientists from Osaka University in Japan say they've created mice with two fathers using a technique that could one day allow human male couples to have their own children. The scientists took skin cells from a male mouse and converted them into stem cells, deleted the Y chromosomes and duplicated the X chromosome, which effectively turned the cell into an egg, which would then be fertilised with sperm from another male mouse. Seven mouse pups were born and were reportedly healthy and went on to have a normal lifespan. But the scientists cautioned that we are still a way off this being used successfully with humans, as there's a lot more research to be done and many ethical considerations to be made. That's all we have time for on YouTube today. But if you want to see our discussion of Eurovision, I mean, I'm joking. just for the tickets. I want to be, I want just to be in legitimately. Don't, don't corrupt. Tickets. Don't be corrupt and get us in. But we would like some tickets. Or do I don't care? Then watch the extended ad-free edition of the Daily Briefing over on Nebula. That's the streaming service we're building with a bunch of our creator friends, many of whom you're likely to be already watching. That means that by signing up, you not only get an extended ad-free daily briefing every single day, you also get to watch exclusive and ad-free videos from the best educational creators on YouTube. That's things like Real Life Law's incredible Modern Conflicts, which breaks down contemporary disputes around the world, Neo's Underexposure, which beautifully dives into complex and shadowy topics you've always wanted to know more about, or Extremities from Wendover Productions, which uncovers some of the world's most remote places. All of these are only available on Nebula, just like our extended daily briefings and a whole bunch of other exclusive TLDR content which never comes to YouTube. If you want to sign up, use the link in the description so that they know you came through us. That helps us out a whole lot, as does watching on Nebula more generally. So thanks for signing up and we'll see you on Nebula.